This video is about how functions execute and how they relate to the rest of the program or analysis script in which they are embedded. And to start with, we're going to talk about how we should treat functions as black boxes or isolated from the rest of the code that we're writing. And so let's look at how this would work. Uh, if we've got some bigger program or analysis script, call this our program. And then within that program, we So if we're writing a larger program or analysis script with some functions in it, let's illustrate how that larger set of code should interact with the functions. And so the basic idea is if this is our larger program, and then we've got a function inside of it, The function itself should act like it doesn't know anything about what's going on in the broader program except the inputs that we pass it as arguments. And the larger program should act like it knows nothing about what's going on inside this function except for the output that the function passes back out. Okay, and so the function has to operate only on the inputs and the program acts like it knows nothing about what's in the function except for the outputs that it returns. And so now we're gonna go back to R and actually look at what this looks like in practice. And we're gonna start where we left off last time uh, with our calc shrub vol function and our call to it. And I'm gonna first talk through how this uh, function and function call execute, and then I'll demonstrate it uh, using something called a debugger. So what happens when we run this code? The first thing that happens is the function gets defined. It gets created. It's like writing a recipe uh, down for how to do things, but we haven't done anything with that recipe yet. We haven't actually cooked anything. And then down here on line seven, once we call that function with some inputs, what happens is that the first step is these arguments get assigned to these variables or parameters based on their position. And so the first thing that happens is 0.8 gets assigned to length, 1.6 gets assigned to width, and 2.0 gets assigned to height. And those are now variables, but those variables only exist inside the function. The function then looks up the value for length and the value for width and multiplies those two numbers together and assigns it to the variable area, which also only exists inside the function. And then it looks up the value for area and the value for height and multiplies them together and stores them in volume. And then it looks up the value for volume and returns it as output to the outside of the function. That's now the end result of this function call. And that value gets stored into the shrub volume variable which can then be used in the outer program. So let's look at that operating uh, in action. I'm gonna add a breakpoint here. Again, we're using a debugger. You don't need to understand exactly what it's for and how it's working. Uh, we're just gonna use it to visualize the code for now. And I'm gonna do that by first clicking on source. And that's gonna run the code up to this line. And so we can see that it's already 
created our calc shrub vol function, and then the code has paused, and now we can step through it line by line uh, using this button right here. And so we can see that the first thing that happens right after we've executed this line is we're now in a new environment. We're not in the global environment anymore. We're in the function environment for calc shrub vol. And in here, we have uh, values for the length, width, and height that were assigned from these arguments. We're then going to execute this next line of code and it creates the variable area, having multiplied the uh, variables length and width together. The next line of code creates the variable volume by multiplying the area by the height. And so we can see we're still in this function. This environment and all of these variables are present. And then, uh, the value for volume gets looked up and returns to the outer program. That's our 2.56, and it gets assigned to this shrub vol variable. And now we can see that the uh, environment for that function doesn't exist anymore. It's disappeared. And if we tried to look at a variable that was created in this function, like say volume, we'll get an error saying volume not found because it doesn't exist anymore. And likewise, if we try to look up one of the variables that got created from an argument uh, like width, we'll see that it also doesn't exist. So from that perspective, the function really is a black box, like we talked about at the beginning. Once you're done calling the function, you can't use anything that was created inside of it. It's all gone. It is possible, in contrast, for things that exist in the outer program to be used inside of a function, but you really don't want to do that. And the reason for that is because it can lead to very confusing code and generate really difficult to understand bugs. And so unless you have a compelling reason to do it, uh, you should always treat what's going on inside the function as having to only rely on the inputs that we pass it as arguments. So that's the basic idea behind how functions execute the function creates its own internal environment, and that means that we need to treat functions as if they only know the things that have been passed to them as inputs, and the program has to treat functions as if it only knows what comes out of the function and what goes into it, not what actually happens inside of the function. And now we can step through it line by line using this next button.